Okay, this is the circuit that we're going to be working with. It's an LC series circuit. And we're going to use the oscilloscope so that we can actually see both the inductor voltage, the capacitor voltage, and the voltage applied from the signal generator. So I've already got that set up here. You can see it on the oscilloscope. Uh, channel 1 is here in yellow. Channel 2 is here in blue. And although we've got no third channel effectively on the oscilloscope, because we've only got channel 1 and, and channel 2, we can use the uh, mathematics function on the oscilloscope with this button here to generate uh, an effective third channel. And what that is, it's going to be channel 1 uh, minus channel 2. And that's going to effectively be giving me because of where I've got my uh, probes connected. Let's have a look at that. I've got the signal generator connected to the uh, input of my LC circuit. I've used a 100 ohm series resistor uh, with the, uh, just before the capacitor and the inductor because at resonance, we know that we're effectively going to get a short circuit between the capacitor and the inductor we want to be able to see the effect of that short circuit on the voltage supplied from the signal generator. So uh, therefore, uh, I've put a uh, resistor in line with the output of the uh, signal generator to give it some load. Um, channel 1 is connected to the uh, capacitor. Channel 2 is connected to the top of the inductor. So let's just think about that again. Channel 1 at the top of the capacitor, that's actually at the top of the LC series circuit. Signal generator coming into the top of the 100 ohm resistor. Any uh, short circuit which is developed because of resonant frequency across the capacitor and the inductor uh, will cause the voltage drop then across that 100 ohm resistor and uh, we'll, um, we'll be able to see the effects of that quite clearly on the oscilloscope. I've used a um, 10 millihenry choke, 10 millihenry inductor, and a 0.18, I think it is, uh, microfarad capacitor. All right, let's have a look here. Um, just going up and down with the uh, frequency on the signal generator. If I go right down to uh, a very low frequency, maybe a hundred hertz, uh, and knowing that we've got channel 2 connected across the inductor, well the inductor is going to have uh, a, a very low inductive reactance at a low frequency because the equation for the inductive reactance is, is 2 pi fl. So as the frequency goes up, the reactance goes up. So at low frequencies, the inductor is going to be a short circuit. Hence, with uh, one volt per division on channel two, we're seeing no uh, AC ac across that point at all. As I increase the frequency, we can now start to see uh, a voltage being developed across the inductor. Don't forget channel 1 is the voltage output from the signal generator. Uh, so that should stay fairly constant. Uh, a good signal generator would do that for us. This channel here in purple, this is because mathematically, and using this button here, maths, I can turn that channel off and now I've just got my uh, signal generator input and my inductor voltage shown here in blue. But when I turn the math function on uh, I get a choice here math channel A minus channel B. And that's exactly what I want because if I minus the voltage I'm putting in uh, minus rather the inductor voltage from the voltage I'm putting in we know that we should only then have the capacitor voltage left. So that's what we've got showing here in purple, effectively the capacitor voltage. Right, I'll turn that 
menu back off. As we increase the frequency, we should then see the inductor voltage come up to a point where it equals the capacitor voltage. And of course the capacitor voltage and the inductor voltage are 180 degrees out of phase, so they will cancel each other out. So just increasing that there now. Let's have a look at the uh, signal generator. You see I'm going up. So back to the oscilloscope. I'm, I'm still increasing in frequency. And I'm reaching a point there now where, look what's happened. We've got the inductor voltage is, is nice and high. The capacitor voltage is also starting to come up because uh, the reactance of the capacitor is changing as the frequency changes as well. And the voltage being applied to the circuit has now dipped considerably because the circuit is loading the signal generator down. Let's see if I can get a null there. I can almost get a null. I'm looking at one volt per division on channel one. If I reduced that uh, and made it more sensitive, I'd find that I'm not quite getting zero, but getting pretty close to it. So I've got the two voltages here. Let me just adjust uh, channel two and we'll move him up a little bit. You can see there now that uh, I've got the same amplitude on channel 2 as what I've got on the capacitor, which means that the voltage on the inductor is the same as the voltage on the capacitor. They are 180 degrees out of phase, so the net effective voltage now is zero. So the fact that those two voltages are cancelling, uh, that's causing more or less a short circuit to appear across the output of the signal generator and uh, I've added that 100 ohm resistance in there to allow a tiny bit of voltage to develop across and uh, not distort the waveform from the signal generator because the signal generator only has an output resistance of about 50 ohms. So I've added a little bit more uh, resistance in that circuit. Looking around about 3.62 kilohertz, if I continue to increase that frequency, I'll just move. Oops! I'll just move the traces again. I'll move the uh, VL down to the bottom. And as we increase the frequency, we see that VC is getting quite small. The capacitive reactance is is quite small. Uh, across the capacitor as the uh, uh, signal generator frequency increases and the inductive reactance is quite large. I'm sitting at around about 8.7 kilohertz there at the moment. The effect on the signal generator voltage is, is negligible because the circuit is no longer at resonance. We certainly do not have um, uh, the effect of a short circuit across the signal generator at this point. I'll take the signal generator back down to a lower frequency. I'm taking the signal generator right down now to uh, 1.5 kilohertz. At 1.5 kilohertz now we see... Oh, now this is an interesting phenomenon. What's happening here? There's a lot to learn about oscilloscopes. You know, tonight we've looked at uh, the, the, the maths function on the oscilloscope to be able to um, get a effective um, third or phantom channel, if you like, up there on the screen. But trigger. We need to know something about triggering. And uh, one thing that we need to know is uh, what are we actually triggering off? Are we triggering off channel two? Or are we triggering off channel one? Well, it's quite important to know that because when the signal that we're triggering off gets too small, the oscilloscope can no longer synchronize its horizontal oscillator uh, against the vertical input because the sample it's taking is too small. Now, we can, uh, we can change the, uh, the level 
here. You can see now that there's a, a new bar being put there. And uh, it's telling me based on this trigger level, naught point something there, uh, and it disappears when I stop moving it. And then it's gone up. Obviously I'm triggering on channel two. Let's investigate that a bit further. Let's go now and say uh, menu for the trigger. And when we come and we look at the menu, uh, it says that we're uh, edge triggered and the source is channel two. If we change that source to uh, channel one, take that away, uh, and then we go and uh, adjust the level. You can see now that the level control is, is showing up here uh, against channel one. And that's quite stable there. There's no uh, drift in that signal there now because prior to this we were triggering off channel 2 and as channel 2 uh, input gets too tiny the oscilloscope can no longer, um, if I can use that term, lock on to uh, the signal and, and stop the horizontal waveform from free running one way or the other. So always make sure that you think about the triggering, about the level and about which channel you're triggering off. Again, if I bring up the menu, uh, source, channel 1, if I go to channel 2, it started the free run because the signal on channel 2 is too small. As I increase the frequency from the signal generator, Increase the frequency from the signal generator there. You can see that XL gets bigger across the inductor, that is channel 2, and as that got bigger, the trace got bigger, and uh, the, the machine was able to uh, synchronize and lock onto that signal much, much better. When we get down to this point here where um, if we want to still trigger on channel 2, we're going to have to play with the level a little bit. So I'll just move that level put the level down there into it and we'll probably be able to find a point there with the level where it will again synchronize and lock on. So that's a little bit about triggering. Alright so what we've done here then, uh, this is a lab for you guys to set up. Uh, this lab uses the uh, inductor, the capacitor, a small value of series resistance, uh, I've got here uh, the output from the signal generator. I've got here the uh, uh, input channel one on the crow, and I've labeled that here. I like to do that. Uh, label the probe so we don't forget what we're doing. If you've got some sticky tape, it's a really good habit to get into. Channel one here, uh, going to effectively where the signal generator comes in. Channel two on the crow, going to the junction between the capacitor and the 10 millihenry inductor. Uh, I've got the earths on the crow joined together here. All the grounds joined together. And uh, the net effect is that we're able to uh, go up and down in frequency and see the change that's occurring on uh, VL, VC and uh, the effect of the loading on the circuit. So as XL goes up, VL goes up. As XL goes up, XC comes down. XC comes down, VC comes down as well. And of course when VL equals VC, then we have that cancellation in the waveform and we can, we, we've already moved that up and we saw that we had the same voltage on VC, VL and VC and that caused a loading effect on the signal generator showing us that a, a series LC circuit is effectively a, uh, a short circuit when it comes into resonant frequency. Uh, I ran the maths on that before and uh, the, the, the maths on that worked out to around about 3.7 kilohertz at the resonant frequency. Uh, the signal generator is showing me that I've got around about 3.58 at the resonant frequency, but that's probably because I've, I've thrown in a little bit more R into the circuit. I've got that series R in the circuit to uh, stop some distortion on the waveforms there. So 
I think it's an interesting lab. I think we should do this lab in class and I think it's good practice at using the trigger function on the oscilloscope. It's good practice at setting up the uh, breadboard for the inductor and the capacitor and the series resistor. And it's a good lab for uh, not only the trigger function but the maths function on the oscilloscope too so that we uh, can subtract channel 2 from uh, channel 1 to give us that phantom channel which in this case is the difference which is the uh, voltage on the capacitor. Okay, I hope this video worked out. I hope I haven't wasted my time.